this is my git guide that i wish that i had when i was a beginner as a developers our daily routine revolves around reading writing reviewing code git is arguably one of the most important tool we use mastering the features and the functionality of the git that it offers is a really best investment that you are going to do in your skills and it is going to pay you off in a long run so let's delve into the git concept starting with the branches in a git repository you will find a main line of a development typically named a main or master from which are several branches diverge these branches represent the simultaneous streams of work enabling developers to tackle multiple features or fixes concurrently within the same projects so typically you have a main or the master you can have a dev or staging like those branches that basically points to the instance of an application or a state of an application so it maintains the entire code base and it is basically a state of a code base that eventually depicts the state of your application commits git commits serve as a bundles of updated code capturing the snapshot of the project's code at a specific point in time it's a series of the changes that happen and it basically gives a track of history that what changes has been made when referring to a commit you will find generally used it in identify a cryptographic hash so each commit has a uniquely identified a alphanumeric character string like this which is called hash and this hash basically you can use along with the command git show followed by hash then it will give you a entire information about that commit like who was the author what was the date it was committed git tags are the landmarks within a git history typically marking a significant milestone in the project's development such as a release happen a version change or the standout commits or major achievements in the project's journey so it represents the version of your application or something very important happen you can associate the tags with the commit since they are linked with the commits even though you change the branch they are going to be shared the most recent commit on currently checked out branch is indicated by a pointer a special pointer and that pointer is called as a head when you are on a specific branch head points to the latest commit on that branch sometimes instead of pointing to a tip of the branch head can be directly pointed to a specific commit that is called a detached head state so if you are pointing a pointer to a recent commit that means your head is attached if you are pointing it to a something different a something different commit which is not a recent commit then this is the detached head state stages understanding git stages is a crucial for the navigating your git workflow they represent the logical transition where changes to your files occur before they are committed to a repository let's delve into the concept of the git stages we have a working directory staging directory and the git repo so the working directory is where you edit modify and create your files to your projects representing the current state of your files on your local machine so this is your local stuff staging area is like a holding area for the pre-commit zone where you prepare your changes before committing them to a repository so you can use the command like git add or git rm to add the changes from the working directory to the staging directory git add will basically add the changes from your local to the staging git rm will remove the changes that you have in your local and it will not stage them to the staging area and those type of changes which are not moved to a staging area are called the unstaged changes local repository the local repository is where a git permanently stores the committed changes it allows you to review your project's history revert to a previous state and collaborate with others on the same code base you can commit the changes that ready to a staging area with a git commit say whatever you have committed that is going to sit in the local repository in the dot git folder that you will see in your project so similar like a local repository we also have a remote repository somewhere here like this so the remote repository is a centralized location typically hosted on a server like github gitlab or bitbucket where you can share and collaborate with others on your project you can use commands like git push and git pull to push pull your committed changes from the local repository to the remote repository well you have to start somewhere and in a git point where you start is your workspace you can fork or clone an existing repository that is already present and have a copy of that workspace locally or if you are starting completely fresh in a new local folder on your machine then what you can do is you can create a fresh repository locally using git init and then later you can push it to a remote from the local you can do a git add git reset to transfer it to a stage from the staging you can use a git commit to transfer it to your local repository dot git folder and from dot git folder you can perform a git push or the git fetch operations to 
transfer it to a remote repository or take it to a local from the remote repository you can use a git pull which is the short form of the doing the git fetch and the git reset that will basically pull the changes from the remote repository and apply to your workspace remember i was talking about setting up a completely fresh new local folder using a git in it so if you do that then the next step that i'm going to show you is a crucially important that cannot be overlooked which is setting up the credential so first thing why you need to set up the credential when running a pushing and pulling to a remote repository you don't want to have to type your username and the password every time to avoid that by simply executing the following commands what you can do is you can store the credentials git config double dash global credential dot helper store this command will store your credential that you have entered at a first time the first time you interact with the remote repository git will prompt you to input your username and password and after that you don't be prompted again it is important to note that the credential are stored in a plain text format with a dot credential file so there is a dot credentials file somewhere in your system where your credentials are stored in a plain text file and not in the encrypted way use this command git config double dash global credential helper and this will show you the credential that you have so once you set up the credential you don't have to worry about it and listen until you change the credential so ideally it is a one-time process but if you are changing your password username then you may have to do it frequently and that's why people choose to use the ssh keys for communicating with the remote repository which is a more safer way even though you change the username or the password of your git account you don't have to change the credential in your local so that's why it is recommended to use the ssh keys instead of storing the credential so git branch will show you the which branch that you are currently working on or if you have to create a new branch you can create a git branch and then followed by the branch name this will basically create a, a new branch from the current branch that you are on so ideally you will be on some branch and it will create a new branch from that to transition between the branches you can use a git switch that will help you to switch to a different branch additionally to transition between them you can also use a git checkout and uh, this will basically check out to a different branch followed by the branch name you can do a git checkout hyphen b and then a branch name hyphen b is a flag that you use if the branch doesn't exist but you want to create it newly so that time you provide the flag hyphen b so git status is a command that will basically show you like what are the changes that you have locally what are the state changes what are the unstate changes so this is the usual workflow you add the changes git add dot will add all the changes that you have in your then you can do git commit double hyphen amend and this will open your default text editor where you can basically change the message that you have in your previous commit message then you can simply do a git push origin your branch and the force be careful with the hyphen hyphen force as it has the potential to override the history of the target branch and the application of the force on the main branch should generally be avoided as a rule of thumb it is better to commit more often than not to avoid losing a progress or accidentally resetting the unstate changes one can rewrite the history of afterward by squashing the multiple commits or doing an interactive rebase there's a safer alternative called force with a liz which i encourage you to use because it tells you that if you don't have something that is already present on target and if you are rewriting or removing something accidentally it gives you that notice you can use a git log always to show a chronological list of commits starting from the most recent commit and the working backward in the time manipulating a history so manipulating a history rebasing and merging it makes a sense to compare rebasing to a merging since there aim is same but they achieve it in a different ways the crucial difference is that rebasing rewrites a project history on the other hand merging maintains the both branch histories and generating the new merge commit so merging generates a new merge commit rebasing is basically taking the commit history from one branch and then uh, just appending it to uh, another branch the workflow here is pretty straightforward ensure you are on the branch you want to rebase and fetch the latest changes from the remote repository so you do a git check out your branch you fetch the changes then you do an actual rebase by using a command git rebase upstream branch name 
again be careful with the force git squashing is used to condense multiple commits into a single cohesive commit since the history will be altered it is important to be mindful of the effects on the project history this is my preferred method of squashing which involves moving the head pointer back x number of the commits while keeping the stage changes so what i do usually is git reset soft head x where x is the number of commits that i want to squash then i do a git commit hyphen m and this is the a common message a combined message for all of those commit then followed by git push origin branch name force cherry picking is a useful for selectively incorporating changes from one branch in another especially when merging entire branch is not desirable or feasible however it is important to use a cherry picking judiciously as it can lead to a duplicate commits and divergent histories if misapplied so cherry picking is basically inserting a git I have this commit hash take the changes from that commit and apply it here let's say this scenario you have a hot fix you have main branch and the feature branch what you can do is you can take the commit from the hot fix and just apply it to your feature branch and it will include only the changes that you had in this particular commit namely r cherry picking is helpful when you are interested in only specific commit and you don't want to merge or the revise the entire history from a hot fix branch to perform this first you have to identify the commit hash of your commit you would like to pick you can do this with a git log you can get a commit hash once you have the commit hash identified you can run a command git checkout target branch then git cherry pick the commit hash do this multiple times if you have a multiple commits and then git push origin target branch to your remote until now we were seeing the commands and the stuff that are needed to play with the basic stuff of the git now we are going to delve into a little bit advanced commands Signing a commits is a way to verify the authenticity and integrity of your commits in a git. It allows you to cryptographically sign your commits using your GPG GNU privacy guard keys. Assuring git that you are indeed the author of the commit, you can do so by creating a GPG key and configuring a git to use a key when committing. So here are the steps. First, you generate the GPG key. Configure git to use your GPG key using git config global user signing key and the key ID that you will get from the first command add the public key to your github account you have to add the public key to a github account then sign your commit with the hyphen s flag you execute this command git commit hyphen s hyphen m git commit message then view assign commits we can do a git log and the show signature with that it will show a commit so signing a git commit is a technique that is used when you have multiple people working on a very critical or a sensitive code and you want to ensure that a commit that is happened is from the valid is from the legitimate user so git ref log it is a topic that we haven't explored that much but they are the pointers to a various objects within a repository primarily commits but also tags and branches it serves as a name points in the git history allowing users to navigate through the repository timeline and access specific snapshot of the these are the benefits that one can get recovering the lost commits or the branches debugging the and troubleshooting undoing the mistakes so ref log is a really powerful message at it says that it has a references to the all the code all the state of your code base at any particular time interactive rebase interactive rebase is a powerful git feature that allows you to rewrite the commit history interactively it enables you to modify reorder combine or delete the commits before applying them to a branch in order to do use it in order to use it you have to become a familiar with the possible actions that are possible such as a pick reward edit squash and the drop so once you know these things you can basically rewrite the entire history in a way you want so how to do an interactive rebase so what you do is you execute this command git rebase hyphen i head and then you pass the number of commits that you want to rewrite hyphen i represent the interactive mode head means that head points to the recent commit it tells that take the recent n number of commits into consideration while doing the interactive rebase so as shown here you can reward the messages you can pick the certain commits or you can drop them you can put s to squash them there are also fix up and the except possibilities available collaborating with a git okay now you understand the git basics now how we collaborate on a single project so you have to understand the two 
important concepts called origins and upstream the origin is the default remote repository associated with your local git repository when you clone it you basically clone it from the origin repository if you have a fork repository then that fork becomes your origin repository by default upstream on other hand refers to a original repository from your repository was for to keep your fork repository up to date with the latest changes from the original repository you git fetch the changes from the upstream repository and merge or rebase them into your local repository to see the remote repository associated with the local repository you can use the command git remote v conflicts don't panic when trying to merge or rebase the branches and conflicts are detected it only means that there are conflicts changes between the different versions of the same file or the files in your repository and they can be easily resolved most of the times so when you get a conflicts it is typically indicated with the affected files where git inserts the conflicts markers with this arrows uh, less than and the greater than arrows and equals to and if you are using the ids like the vs code it also show that very nicely in a highlighted mode here you can decide which changes to keep modify or remove ensuring that the resulting code makes sense and retains the intended functionality after manually resolving the conflicts in the conflicted files remove the conflicts markers like this arrows equals to symbols and just adjust the code as necessary save the changes in the conflicted files once you are satisfied with the resolution and then you push the changes now let's see the popular git workflows we are talking about the collaborating and if you have multiple people working on the same project then you need to have a workflow various git workflow exist however it is important to note that there is no universally accepted best git workflow instead each approach has its own set of pros and cons let's explore like these approaches and at the end it comes to like what approach or the what workflow suits best for your requirement feature branch workflow each new feature or the bug is developed in its own branch and then merge it back into a main branch once completed strength of this workflow is it works in the isolation and it reduces the conflicts because you every time has a separate feature branch that has a small piece of work done weakness it can become a complex and require a diligent branch management which basically means that you can land up in a situation where you have so many branches and uh, then you have to do a diligent management someone some human has to do a diligent management of merging those forking workflow in this workflow each developer clones the main repository but instead of pushing changes directly to it they push changes to their own fork of the repository developers then create a pull request to propose a new changes to a main repository allowing for code review and collaboration before merging this is the workflow we use for collaborate on open source projects trunk based development if you are on a team focus on a rapid iteration and continuous delivery you might use a trunk based development which developers work directly on the main branch committing small and the frequent changes the strength of the trunk based development is it promotes a rapid interaction continuous integration and the focus on delivering the small frequent changes to a production so trunk based development is recommended for project where you have a rapid development need where people can uh, quickly introduce their changes merging is done very more frequently for the shorter branches now let's see some git cheat sheets these are the essential commands that one need to know cloning a repository git clone then passing the git repository url this will basically download the repository to your local machine staging the changes you can just do a git add and then the followed by the files you can specify here you can also specify the wildcard expression like the certain file sending with the extension for example dot spec or dot ts dot js like that commit the changes when you do a git commit lands from the staging area to a local repository pushing the changes to a remote repository you can do that with the git push reset working directly to a last commit we can use a git reset hard that will basically set the head pointer to the recent last commit if you have detached head then using this command it will basically reset your head to a last commit so if you have a detached head state and uh, you don't know like what things are going on so don't worry git reset hyphen hyphen r that will basically set your heart to the recent commit create a new branch git branch branch name this will create a new branch or you can use git checkout hyphen b and branch name that will also create a new branch and will check it out to the newly created branch git checkout to a branch name it will basically switch to a different branch if you have to merge the branch then git merge branch name is a command and there is a simple rule of thumb for the merge always remember that the right side of your merge command git merge into the left side so if you are on a branch a and if you specify that git merge 
branch B, then branch B, which is the right side of the command, will get merged to the branch A. Rebase changes on to another branch. You again have to use this with a caution because if there are shared commits and it's going to lead to a set where you have a duplicate commits. So git rebase branch name. This is going to rebase the branch to your current branch. Again, a same rule of thumb. The right side branch, which is present on the right side of the command, will get rebased to your first. View status of the working directory. You can use a git status to see the changes, unstaged changes, staged changes, modified files. View commit history, you can do a git log to view the commit history. Undo a last commit if you have to do. So if you have done a mistake and uh, you have to undo a last commit, you can do a git reset double hyphen soft head followed by this symbol where it basically means just undo the last commit. And to discard the changes in your current working directory, you can do a git restore then followed by the file name. This will if you have to restore a specific file, then you specify the file name. If you don't, then it will basically restore to the latest version that is present. Retrieve lost commit references. Git ref log is something that we use to uh, get the information of the lost commit because it has a more information about like what commits were squashed, what commits were rebase, merge. So with a git ref log, you can get the lost commit references. With that, thank you for watching this video. If you have any further questions, do let me know them in a comment section. And if you really like my video, then subscribing to my channel is a really good way to show support.